who better to build the town of the future than His Royal Highness Prince Charles, Prince of Wales, the heir apparent to the British throne, who grew up living in, let me check my notes here, Buckingham Palace. Well, clearly he seems to think so, as he decided to do just that when starting construction on Poundbury in 1993. Prince Charles has long held an interest in architecture and city planning, and pretty pointed views that haven't always been appreciated in those circles. His main perspective can be summed up as traditional architecture styles should continue to be used while implementing modern technologies and placing our connection to nature at the center of it all. In his 1989 book, A Vision of Britain, Prince Charles wrote, We can build new developments which echo the familiar, attractive features of our regional vernacular styles. There are architects who can design with sensitivity and imagination so that people can live in more pleasant surroundings. He's also laid out 10 principles of architecture and town planning, many of which are fairly vague but by and large seem to make it clear that Prince Charles is not a fan of the kind of modern architecture that involves large, tall buildings that use a lot of glass and metal, and also that he believes towns should be laid out with pedestrians as a priority over vehicles. Poundbury is his effort to put his money where his mouth is, and actually build a town that represents his vision for the future of architecture and town planning, along with the help of the town's chief architect, Leon Creer, a fellow hater of modernism. And today, this town is more than just a hypothetical. It's an actual functioning town with thousands of residents and nearly 200 businesses due for completion by 2025, when it'll house about 6,000 people. Speaking of Prince Charles's money, he receives his income from the Duchy of Cornwall, which is essentially a collection of investments totaling a worth of over $1 billion, from which the profits go to the heir to the throne. The main investment being land, principally land in the county of Cornwall, giving Prince Charles one of his many titles, the Duke of Cornwall. That's quite the little trust fund. Poundbury is built on a piece of Duchy of Cornwall land in the county of Dorset, and is technically an extension to the existing town of Dorchester. And as you can see at first glance, it looks like what you might expect from an average British town, but not necessarily what you might picture if someone told you to envision the town of tomorrow. So what makes the town an opinion article in The Guardian called fake, heartless, authoritarian, and grimly cute so innovative? Well, it's nothing like the cities imagined in Cities of the Future, a documentary on Curiosity Stream. Imagining what our cities will look like in 2050 and beyond as technology evolves and populations continue to rise along with new challenges. And thanks to Curiosity Stream sponsoring this video and hooking Future Now viewers up with a limited time only 40% discount on their annual subscription, you can go check it out. Go to curiositystream.com futurenow and use code Future now at checkout to get a year of Curiosity Stream for just 12 bucks and get access to their giant library of curated award winning documentaries and TV shows about history, nature, science, food, technology, travel, and more. That's all I really need to say for the sponsorship, but I want to additionally recommend you check out these Curiosity Stream shows hosted by Derek Muller, also known as Veritasium, here on YouTube. Okay. So as Poundbury's website, which misspells the town's name not once but twice as Pound Hurry and Pound Bunny points out, one of the main innovations is the mixed-use nature of the town, interweaving stores, cafes, and offices with private homes. Unlike the common suburban neighborhoods of predominantly private homes distanced from the commercial lots on the neighborhood's edges. And it's not all small shops either. There are also a couple of factories which they love to talk about in their PR releases. In particular, a chocolate factory and a cereal factory. And this mixture also seems to benefit the businesses and residents mutually, where the workers can drop off their kids at daycare in the same neighborhood as the factory in which they work, and go out for lunch at one of the local restaurants, which I'm sure appreciate that business. This also makes it easier to run errands, go to work, and go out to eat without the need to use a car if you live in Poundbury. And although Prince Charles's town planning principles specifically point out prioritizing pedestrians over cars, 
cars, the mission doesn't seem to be to eliminate cars from the town. There's plenty of parking at both homes and commercial properties, but one particularly strange thing about Poundbury is the total lack of traffic signs directing drivers. Not even stop signs. Instead, the roads were laid out in such a way as to naturally slow drivers down. This might partly explain why the layout of the town does seem somewhat chaotic for a carefully planned brand new town. The town follows something called the 70 meter rule, which is about 2,756 inches for us Americans, or about 250 and a half subway footlongs, which are about 11 inches long on average. That helps, right? Anyway, the 70 meter event rule is basically what it sounds like. Every 70 meters, some sort of car slowing event is designed. For example, buildings jutting out into a road creating blind bends that force drivers to slow down. It basically creates as unpredictable a road as possible considering everything stays in place. Having lived in major cities like Miami, Boston, and Washington DC, full of let's just say not the models of great driving, and also road signs aplenty, I was really curious to hear if this actually works. So I reached out to another YouTuber who happens to know a lot about city planning. My name is Dave Amos. I'm the creator of City Beautiful, a YouTube channel about cities and city planning. And in my day job is I'm an assistant professor of city and regional planning at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. I was wondering like your take, does this sound like practical? Is this something that you've heard of or? like used before? Yeah, I, I haven't heard of the 70 meter rule specifically, but the principle of sound, the idea that you would create obstacles or make drivers feel uncomfortable to get them to slow down, that that's a real thing. The the average width of a highway lane is much wider than the width of say like an alley or small uh, neighborhood street. And that's because I want a wider street so you can feel comfortable going fast on a highway and a narrow one makes you go slower. And similarly, um, you, know, you can make drivers uncomfortable by making them have to divert um, similar to what they're suggesting here. So yeah, it's all uh, kind of sound psychology, honestly. Like as drivers, if you're uncomfortable, you're gonna be moving slower, you're gonna be looking out for people. Um, and it's, it creates a safer environment for everyone, even though drivers tend to hate it, <laughs> but that is what it is. Another feature of Poundbury, which has been lauded, is that 20% of housing is designated as affordable housing, but these are actually scattered among the other houses and are indistinguishable by design. This is meant to reduce the stigma that has long plagued tenants of affordable housing, and is also meant to encourage socializing across people of different income levels. This sounds really great on paper, but being a cynic, I wanted to hear Dave's perspective on this approach. Uh, yeah, the idea there is uh, absolutely sound. It's also, uh, there are lots of benefits that have been found to being associated with uh, mixing in lower income and moderate and higher income populations. Uh, for example, uh, you get low income households having a lot of the benefits that come with uh, being in an upper income neighborhood, things like school access, um, just sort of the informal networks that form. A lot of the advantages that upper income folks uh, a crew is due to networking, uh, talking to neighbors and things, and having neighbors that are of different incomes means that lower income neighbor, neighbors sometimes get those sort of network benefits as well. So for all of those reasons, it's generally a positive thing to do. It's tricky sometimes, but when it's done well, it can really make a difference for everyone. All of these seem like promising ideas for improving life in a modern town. The problem seems to be the prince's contradictory vision for the future. On one hand, a modern take on urban planning that takes into account industry, the cohabitation of pedestrians and cars, and rising income inequality. And on the other hand, a wish to stay in the past when it comes to the look of the town. It's hard not to draw comparisons to the idea of the crown and royalty adapting to a modern life while holding onto antiquated traditions. Prince Charles has made his absolute disdain for modernism and architecture clear, and there's definitely something to be said for not building a town that wholly ignores the history and cultural language of the region it's built in. But Poundbury's design ends up looking more like a cheap movie set of an old English town. It's meant to embody Georgian architecture of the 18th and 19th century, but it was built using 21st century tools. So the brick and stucco buildings are actually steel framed on the inside, and 
ornamental features like gargoyles are not sculpted but rather molded like mass-produced products. Steel and fiberglass, materials that are on display and part of what some find appealing about the look of modern design, and which the prince has denounced, are still in use in Poundbury, but hidden or disguised. Critics have rightly pointed out that faking classic architecture looks and feels as heartless and awkward as the prince claims modernist design looks and feels. At the end of the day, the architectural style of the buildings is just a matter of opinion. As a city planner, I'm more concerned about how the building addresses the public realm. So for me, it doesn't matter if it's like Georgian or modernist, so long as you know there are uh, frequent entry points to the building to create um, activity on street level. If there's transparency in windows, like the shop windows, so you you know you can look into to buildings. Uh, blank concrete walls are generally bad because it just creates an inhospitable pedestrian environment. Uh, and blank concrete walls can happen in modernist buildings and in Georgian buildings. So um, it's really not so much the design, uh, you know, style. It's how the buildings work with uh, work with each other and work with the, the rest of the city. But Poundbury is meant to be a prototype for more new towns around England and elsewhere. My hope is that other city planners and architects take from Poundbury what is working, but continue to try new and innovative designs that are not strictly nostalgic for a bygone era. I would also love to revisit Poundbury's success once the so-called master plan is achieved in 2025. Since the town is built to accommodate 6,000 people, how would it adapt to, say, a new company setting up shop in or near Poundbury creating thousands of new jobs. Most of us live in towns or cities that have been developing over decades or even centuries, so I wanted to hear from Dave what his perspective was as a city planner on Poundbury's experimental brand new town and its future. It's a very difficult task, and it's probably going to take years to make the city feel or the community feel lived in, because I know that a lot of the criticisms of Poundsbury is that it feels kind of Disney-esque right now, uh, or sort of artificial. Um, so it just takes time for a city to really sort of settle into itself. So we'll see what happens in 10, 15, 20, 50, 100 years from now. It'll, be, it'll just be interesting to see what happens in the, in the long term, but um, tough task. They're doing the best they can, I think. Uh, we'll see what happens. Overall, I'm glad that people are trying new things when it comes to imagining the future of modern neighborhoods. And the interesting thing about Poundbury is that it's not theoretical. It's an actual functioning town. If you like this video, definitely check out Dave's videos over at City Beautiful. He's an actual city planner and makes fantastic videos explaining what makes for good and bad cities. And make sure to check out curiositystream.com slash future now and use code future now at checkout to support my channel and stream fascinating new education educational content. Seriously, thank you so much to CuriosityStream for supporting this channel. Remember to like and hit subscribe because there is a new video coming out next month. I'll see you in the future.